Good day all. Welcome to today's edition of Dr. Ifi's Hematology and Blood Transition Science Lecture Series. Today, we are going to be discussing average blood group system. And it is expected that at the end of this class, at the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe average blood group system, mention the antigens that are in average blood group system, describe average blood system antibody reactivity, and its their characteristics. Understand the genetics and inheritance of RH antigens. And of course, be able to explain the clinical significance of RH antibodies. Introduction. The RH system consists of the second most important blood group system second only to ABO blood group system, which we have previously discussed. It is very important in terms of its clinical significance, transfusion therapy, and blood bank practice. And this is because the RHD antigen is highly antigenic and very immunogenic. And therefore, it has the ability to stimulate the production of antigen in any RHD negative individual. History of RH blood group system. It was described in 1939 by Levine and Stetson following a woman that had stillbirth, the woman suffered severe postpartum hemorrhage and needed blood transfusion. The husband was ABO compatible with this woman and the husband offered to donate blood for her. The husband donated the blood Unfortunately, the woman reacted adversely to this blood transfusion. And it was noticed that the stillbirth and adverse reaction the woman had to the blood transfusion were connected to the presence of previously unknown antibody which was later found to be as a result of a factor that was on the husband's red blood cell and also present on the baby's uh, red blood cell. While the mother carried the fetus, the mother was exposed to this factor and developed antibody against the fetal red blood cells which led to the stillbirth. On when the woman re-encountered this antigen during the transfusion from the, the father, that is the husband, and there was resulting blood transfusion reaction. So the woman re-encountered this particular factor found on the husband red blood cell when the husband donated the blood to her. This particular factor was previously not named. Lansdena and Werner in 1940 injected red blood cell of rabies monkey, you know, in uh, rabies and guinea pigs, stimulating the production of antibody that reacted against the monkey cells. It was wrongly, you know, thought that the agglutinating antibodies that were found in the mother serum were actually the same as the one described by Lansdena and his group. And because of that, that antibody was named rhesus antibody and the antigen called 
resist antigen. But later it was discovered that this antibody is actually distinct from the one described by Blastena and Co. But that name, Rhesus, has been, people have started using the name Rhesus to describe the antigen in that group and also antibody in that particular group. Because of that, instead of changing the name totally, the name was abbreviated to RH. Therefore, the name for this particular uh, group of antigen was now was now named RH instead of uh, rhesus as it was previously called. And the antibody is anti-RH. So the antigen that was described by Stessy, the first antigen that was described was called RHG antigen, while the antibody is now known as RHG antibody. Fisher and Race in 1943 and 1944 discovered the other antigens that are involved in RH blood group system, like big C, big E, little C, and little E, in addition to the earlier discovered one, big D, that is upper letter uh, D. RH system is one of the most complex blood group system. It is very, very polymorphic. It has many different uh, phenotypes. Number of antigens that are in average blood group system. Studies have shown that we have more than 50 antigens in average blood group system. And the most significant of them all, we have about five that are, we can, that are very, very important. The antigen D, denoted by big D, the capital letter D. Then antigen C, big C, that is capital letter C, capital letter E, and then what we call little E, that's the lower form of letter E. Little E, little C, that makes it five. Antigen D, Antigen E, antigen C, big letter E and C, and then little C and little E. Array genetics. The array gene is found on chromosome one, and there are co-dominant arrays. DNA studies, research and DNA studies has shown that. In reality, there are only two genes that cause for the antigens that are found in RH blood group system. The genes are RHG, denoted by RH capital letter D, and the second gene is RHCE, capital letter C and capital letter E, or you can use upper letter E and upper letter E. C and E. The average, remember I said they are located on chromosome one. The average G gene calls for the production of the average G polypeptide that eventually leads to the production of average G antigen on the red cell, surface of the red cell uh, membrane. Those that are RHD negative lack RHD gene. They don't have the RHD gene. This might be due to deletion of the RHD gene totally. They don't have the gene, and that explains why the antithetical antigen gene has never been described. And this also helps to prove why RHD is so immunogenic. In Caucasian population, those that are RHG negative is, is actually due to deletion of the whole RHG gene. 
why in African population, in African and Asia, the allergy negative is actually due to alteration, alteration in allergy gene, which leads to inactive, production of inactive or silent allergy gene. Let me take that, that again. I said that the RH antigen, the production of RH antigen actually in the membrane of red blood cells because are, they are coded by two genes, the RH D gene and RH C E gene. The RH D gene is responsible for the production of RHG polypeptide that calls for the production of RHG antigen. Those that are RHG positive, they have this gene, functional RHG gene intact. For those that are RHG negative, they don't have RHG gene. It may be due to deletion of this gene from their chromosome. For studies have shown that in Caucasian, those that are RHG negative, their own negativity is actually due to total deletion of RHG gene. Why in Africa and Asia, the RHG negative is actually due to alteration in RHG gene that results in the you know in formation of inactive or silent gene then the average ce remember is the notion is like shown in the slide here is average upper letter c e in codes for the big c little c and big E little C, production of big C little C antigen and big E little E antigen. And plus other antigen that are found in average blood group system. The average C E gene has four options. You know, as either it can have as either big C little E, little C little E, little C big E, and big C. E. The RHG and RHCE genes are highly homologous and they are closely linked together. The first FOT1 N terminal amino acid on the RHG protein and that of RHCE protein are identical. The first, the first FOT1 N-terminal amino acid are identical. The D and CE proteins are 97% identical, only define about 30 to 35% uh, 30, 30 to 35% amino acid. They have about 30 to 30, 30 to 35 amino acid difference between them. And the genes are called haplotypes because they are inherited together. The genes are called haplotypes because they are inherited uh, together. Most people that carry RHCE gene with the, the most people can have RHCE gene with or without RHG genes. Now, the D and C E produce, uh, produce protein. These two genes, they produce proteins that are inserted into the red blood cell membrane. And as they are inserted into the red blood cell membrane, they form complex with what we call RH associated glycoprotein in the red blood cell membrane. Now the polymorphism in that involve RHG 
most commonly arises from deletion of the entire ROG gene. Why the one that involves big C, little c, you know, is due to single nucleotide polymorphism that calls for amino acid change. Why the one that involves big E, little e, has a single nucleotide polymorphism that involves a single amino acid change. This is actually the basis of the clinical significance of RHZ compared with one red. Remember when we discussed the ABO blood group sequence, the difference between A antigen and B antigen is just a difference of one uh, carbohydrate or oligosaccharide, either galactose or n acetylgalactosterase but here you have one or four amino acid difference and between the RHG and RHC you have up to 30 to 35 amino acid difference making this system highly polymorphic and also having many phenotypes the RH antigens are proteins they are proteins and the sequence of amino acids determines the specificity of most of these RH, protein, RH antigens. They are proteins and they are, they, they are expressed as part of a protein complex in, RH, uh, in the red blood cell, like I said earlier, that they are incorporated into the red cell membrane and they form a complex with a protein called RH associated uh, glycoprotein. And because of this, they are restricted only to the surface of the red blood cells. They are restricted only to the surface of the red blood cells. Now, the, the antigens, the RH antigens are kind of, uh, they form something like a tetramer consisting of two molecules of RH associated glycoprotein and also two molecules of uh, RH proteins. And this RH associated glycoprotein is actually located on chromosome six. And it is, it is primary function is it helps in expression of RH antigens in the cell membrane. It helps in the expression of RH antigens in the cell membrane. And RH associated glycoprotein must be present to direct the RH antigens to the cell membrane. If it is missing, none of the RH antigens can be expressed. This point should be noted. Without the RH associated glycoprotein being present, none of the RH antigens can be expressed in the red blood cell membrane. The RH antigen need to form a complex with RH associated glycoprotein before they can be expressed on the red cell membrane. The RH antigens are developed in the fetus before birth and they are present only on the red blood cell membrane. RH antigens are well developed at birth. You can assess them from you can actually detect them at about five to six weeks of fetal life. They are well developed at birth. They are not found in body fluids. Neither are they found on the surfaces of leukocytes, leukocytes and the platelets. Unlike the antigens, the ABO blood groups that can be found on the surface of the red cells and also can be found in the fluid, they can also be found in in, on, on leukocyte and platelet, the antigens of RH blood group system are restricted uh, restricted only to red blood cell membrane. They cannot be found in the body fluid. Neither can they be found on the uh, uh, leukocytes or platelets. And racial differences have been observed with respect to the antigens of the RH system. Now let's be specific. Let's look at RHG antigen. We've looked at, we've described generally all the RH antigens, but let us narrow it down to RHG antigen now. 
The D antigen is the strongest individual antigen of the RH system. It is highly immunogenic and is also very, very, very antigenic. The D is a large protein that crosses the red blood cell membrane 12 times, having six, forming six extracellular loops. Different RH phenotypes express different amounts of D antigen. Different RH phenotypes express different um, amounts of D antigen. And studies have also shown that the big C antigen, the upper letter C antigen, has a, a depressive effect on the expression of D antigen. The big C antigen has a depressive effect on the expression of a D antigen. Now, the big C, little c, big E, little e antigens. Like I said earlier, these antigens reside on the RHCE polypeptide. And C is antithetical to C, little c, while big E is antithetical to little e. The difference between the C protein and the little c protein is just four amino acids. The difference between the big C, upper letter C antigen, and the little c protein is just four amino acids. Why the difference between the E protein and the little e protein is just one amino acid? They are less immunogenic. These antigens are less immunogenic than the antigen. And the immunization rate is 1 to 3% when compared to the antigen. The table here actually shows the frequency of big C, little c, big E, little e antigens among in different uh, populations, Caucasian, Blacks, and Asian. Now, what we call F antigen. Like I said earlier that this system is highly polymorphic and you have so many phenotypes. Now, this F antigen describes little c, little e antigen that are inherited together on the same position, uh, on the same protein in cis position. It is not expressed if little c and little e antigens are on different proteins. Individuals who do not have little c, little e in cis position cannot make, can, can make an F. Individual who do not have little c, little e in cis position can make anti-F. And anti-F is usually very weak and it can only react with little c, little e cells when they are in cis position. Functions of Rx antigens. The Rx antigens are thought to play a role in maintaining the integrity of the red blood cell. They play a role in maintaining the integrity of the red blood cell membrane. The, the studies have shown that absence of Rh complexes or Rh antigen in the red cell membrane, in the red cell membrane alters the shape of red cell membrane, alters the shape of the red cell, increases its, its osmotic fragility, and shortens its lifespan, result, lifespan resulting in hemolytic anemia that is usually mild in nature. Average antigen may also be involved in the transport of ammonia ac across the red blood cell membrane. What am I trying to say? That functions of these Rh antigens that it's been discovered that they, are in, they play a role in maintaining the integrity of red blood cell. And the studies have shown that those red cells that don't have these antigens, you know, have increased osmotic fragility, shorten their lifespan, and are prone to hemolytic anemia. 
RH antibodies. All RH antibodies are immune antibodies. They are not natural occurring antibodies. They are formed in response to immunization, either by transfusion or pregnancy. These antibodies are mainly IgG antibodies. Very few IgM is expressed as gestationally. Very few IgM. They are mainly, mostly IgG. And because they are mostly IgG, we can say they are warm antibodies and they react optimally at 37 degrees Celsius. Up to 80% of people will produce anti-D after exposure to positive cells and can be dictated after six weeks. You have anti-D, anti-big E, anti-big C, anti-little E, anti-little C, and again, anti-D plus C. These RH antibodies are they can they are capable of causing thermolysis, but they cannot activate the complement. They can't they cannot activate complement. They bind red blood cells and mark them off for destruction in the spleen. So they actually cause extravascular hemolysis. They cause extravascular hemolysis. They can cause hemolytic transfusion reaction. It can be delayed, it can be severe, but the hemolysis is mostly, mostly extravascular. They, can, they, are also, they have also been implicated seriously in hemolytic disease of the newborn. They, because the IgG antibody can actually navigate through uh, placental barriers to harm the unborn child. They can cause hemolytic disease of the fetus and the newborn. And the one that actually most implicated in this is uh, anti-D. Anti-D and anti-little anti C can cause severe hemolytic disease of the newborn, followed that by, uh, by others that can cause mild, mod moderate and mild hemolytic disease of the newborn, like anti-big C, anti-big E, and anti little E, and what we call anti G. Now, anti G antibodies. The G antigen is present on the red cells that carry either the big D or big C antigen. The G antigen is present on the red cell that carry either the big D or big C antigen. The G protein is only absent when a person lacks both D or C antigen. It's the, it's the genotype of the individual or a person lacks the D or C antigen, the person is likely will lack G antigen. G antigen is present only on the red cells of individuals that have the D antigen or C antigen, and in this case, it is big C. If an individual is phenotype little arrow R, if with this particular phenotype as shown on the slide, R R little R, small letter R, is transfused with small letter R prime and R zero prime, or that of R zero prime R. Red cells, they may make an apparent anti-D plus anti-big C, anti-big D plus anti-big C antibodies, even though they have not been exposed to C antigen. But this particular antibody that is made in this case is actually called anti-G. Anti-G can be made where the mother is phenotype little r r and the partner is either arrow little arrow prime or big r sub, uh, substitute zero remember what i said that g antigen is present on red cells that carry either the g and 
D, D antigen, good D antigen, or good C antigen. And the antigen can be made where the mother is little phenotype, little RR, and the partner is either little R prime or upper letter R sub subscript zero as indicated on the slide. Antigen antibodies. 30% of apparent anti big D plus C pregnant women are in fact anti G. The women that have this particular antibody is in fact what is actually what they actually have is what we call anti G. And there are about 10,000 to 20,000 G sites on the red cells of big R subscript one, the phenotype of big R sub subscript one and big R subscript one, and 3,500 3, to 6,000 on R2, R2 individuals. That is big R2, big R2 individuals. Antigen reacts more strongly with big R1, R1 phenotype than R2, R2 cells. G, the G protein or G antigen is expressed on cord blood. And if you have, uh, if you are suspecting that antigen is present in addition to anti G, then you will do absorption, addition absorption technique using D negative, Big C positive and G positive red cells to determine if anti D is present with anti G. Now, common phenotypes that you have in RH blood group uh, system. The commonest phenotype we have in RH blood group system is what we call RH positive phenotype. RH positive phenotype. The RH positive phenotype is based on the presence of RH D antigen. Now, what it means for you to say that somebody is RH positive, it's actually based on that description is based on the presence of RH D antigen in the individual. That means that individual should have a functional RH D gene. In Caucasian, we have about 85% of people being RH D positive. Why in Africa we have almost about 95% of individuals being uh, RHD positive. Then RHD negative, RHD negative phenotype, it described, is based on, the description just based on absence of RHD antigen. It's based on absence of RHD antigen. That is, the person does not have RHD gene, which might be due to deletion or alteration or having non functional uh, RHD gene. And you have RHD negative phenotype being about 15% in Caucasian UK and 5% occurrence in Africa. Then we have a common phenotype. We have a common phenotype. Then, you know, the D antigen contains about 30 epitopes, that's the antigenic sites. Now, variation in the D phenotype arises when these epitopes are only weakly expressed in some individual, that is, weak D, what we call weak D phenotype, or when some of it are actually missing, what we call partial D phenotype. Now, weak D phenotype. In weak D phenotype, all the antigen epitopes are present, but they are weakly, they are under-expressed. All the antigen epitopes are present, but they are under-expressed. It is typically caused by a single amino acid switch in the transmembrane region of the RHD protein. It is typically the weak D expression, weak D phenotype is typically caused by a single amino acid switch in the transmembrane region 
of the RAG pro uh, protein. The, this disrupt how the RAG protein is inserted into the red blood cell membrane, reducing the level of expression of RAG. In most cases, adequate level of G antigens are present, and because there has not been no that, that there has been no change in G epitopes, the formation of antibi is prevented. Now, what it means is that those that are with the phenotype, they can receive RAG positive blood. They won't, they won't be able, they will not make, they cannot be sensitized to produce anti G. They cannot be sensitized to produce anti G. They can receive RAG positive blood if they need blood transfusion. But they can also only give blood to those who are RAG positive. They can only give their blood in terms of donation to those who are RAG positive. Then there are another phenotype, uncommon phenotype, what we call partial G phenotype. In this particular phenotype, some G antigen epitopes are missing. This phenotype is usually caused by the creation of a hybrid of RAG a hybrid between RAG and RACE protein. The hybrid protein is similar enough, you know, for RAG to be correctly inserted into the red blood cell membrane, but it lacks several epitopes found on the complete RAG protein. Because of that, they, the people, individuals that are Partial G phenotype can make anti G when sensitized. They can produce anti G when sensitized. Therefore, when they are in need of blood transfusion, they can only be given RAG negative blood. But when they want to donate blood to another patient, they can only donate their blood to RAG positive individuals. They cannot, their blood cannot be given to people who are total RAG negative people. Their blood can only be given to those who are in terms of blood transfusion. When they are serving as donors, they can only give their blood to those who are RAG positive. But when they are patient, they can only receive blood from those who are RAG negative. We have more of this uh, partial uh, G phenotype in Africa than in Caucasian. What we call GU and all that uh, is actually partial G. And they have uh, grades. They have grade, they have high grade and low grade. But whatever it, it is, grade it is, the most important thing I want to point out is that as a donor, they can only give their blood to RAG positive individual, while as a patient, they can only receive blood from those who are RAG negative, okay? Another phenotype we want to look at is what we call RH norm. RH norm. This group of people do not express any RH antigen in their red blood cell membrane. They don't express any RH antigen in their red cell membrane. There are two types of RH null phenotype, two types. One is called the AMOF, and the other one is called the regulator type. The AMOF type, and then the regulator type. Now, two genetic pathways can be used to describe a responsible for these two RH null phenotype, two genetic pathways. In the individual, for, for you to have average now the amorph type, what happens is that this individual, they lack the ability to, they lack to produce average antigens entirely. They cannot produce it because 
they lack the RAT gene, and also they lack the RACE gene, or if it is there, it is ineffective, it's not functional. So the average now that develop as a result of absence of RACE gene, and also having non-functional RACE gene, is called the AMO RH non-phenotype. Why the second type is called the regulator RH non-phenotype. This type of RH non-phenotype develop as a result of having inherited, inactive, or mutated RH associated glycoprotein. Remember, when, when we are discussing this RH associated glycol, I said for you to express RH antigens in the yeah, red cell membrane, you must have RH associated glycoprotein. It is this RH uh, 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 associated glycoprotein that helps in directing and also. Help is also, is also, it also helps in expressing these average antigens in the red cell membrane because they form complex. They form complex with average antigens. And then this complex is what actually helps in embedding these uh, average antigens in the red cell membrane. So in this particular individual, they don't have, they have the RAG gene, actually, but, which means they can make RAG antigens, but because they lack functional RAG associated glycoproteins, they cannot incorporate these RAG antigens into the red cell membrane. So these RAG antigens are not expressed in the red cell membrane of this particular individual. Because of that, they are called average non-regulator type. Average non-regulator phenotype. So we have basically two types of average non-phenotype. The amorph type that is due to deletion or having non-functional RHD gene and RHCE gene. And the second type, the regulator type that is due to having inactive or mutated RH associated glycoprotein. Now, these patients that are RH non-phenotype, they are at risk of adverse transmission reaction because they may produce antibodies against several RH antigens if they are transfused with blood, number one, they are prone to hemolytic anemia and also reduce carbon dioxide membrane permeability. And then another important thing is this, that average non individuals who have been transfused or who are pregnant may form among other antibodies, other average antibodies because they, can, because they don't have any average antigens in their system. So, any blood that you give that contain any, I remember I said that we have over 50 average antigens. So if any blood that you give that contain this antigen is introduced into their system, they make antibodies against them. But in addition, they make another important antibody that is called anti rh 29 antibody. anti rh 29 antibody. This antibody, this antibody, can agglutinate cells from everybody, can actually agglutinate anything, or cells from everybody, apart from cells of people who are also average null. This anti average 29 antibody, that is a peculiar antibody that can be made by these people who are average null, has the capacity to agglutinate cells from almost other individuals who are not, uh, every other person who is not um, average now. So what it means is that these people that are average now can only receive blood transfusion 
from individuals who are also IRH norm. And owing to this deposition of IRH norm blood, it is recommended that people who have this rare blood type donate autologous blood and have it frozen for transfusion because it is very difficult. It is rare. So they exist, but it is rare to find them in the society. So at times, autologous donation is recommended for them to donate when they are healthy and it can be used for them when they are in need. Now let's look at uh, nomenclature. Fisher and race believe uh, Fisher and race believe that our system consisted of three closing linked genes. The D at one locus, that is the big D at one locus, big C or little C at one second locus, and then big E or little E at the third um, at another locus. And as reflected in his terminology, the Fisher and race have this terminology that we are using today, the BCE terminology. Why when our terminology was based based on the belief that the average antigens were the product of a single gene coding for an agglutinogen composed of multiple blood factors. And we have a modified form of Werner version of naming these uh, antigens in, in uh, average blood group system. And he used upper letter R to describe all the 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 gene or the haplotype that have big letter D. Why he used lower letter R, that the little R to describe those that have a small letter D. Okay, that is those that are having RSG positive. They describe them with big letter R. Those are having RSG negative describe them with little letter r we said we have two individuals that propose nomenclature you know terminology to destroy the antigens in the average blood group system fisher and race that brought in the bce terminology and the Werner terminology that used big r and the little r with subscript and superscript either prime prime or numbers as the case may be. Inheritance. Inheritance of uh, G, uh, antigens or genes of average blood group system it is actually inherited in a Mendelian uh, fashion, just like that of ABO, as we described or we discussed earlier. Three pairs of allomorphic antigens are inherited. The genes and antigens are represented as big C, big D, and big E, with their alternative genes as little c, little d, little e. Every individual inherits one set of three closely linked, either big C, little c, or big D, or big E, little e, alleles from each parent. And this is called haplotype. Haplotype. And genetically, every individual has two haplotypes, each acting as a single Mendelian dominant character. And this, the table here is showing the eight inheritable haplotype in average blood group system. The, this side that describes BCE is actually the race and Fisher, Fisher and race uh, the, the nomenclature. Why the Werner nomenclature is the other side of it. Okay, the eight inheritable haplotype in average blood group system is shown on the system as it is now. Now, the inheritance, let's look at this scenario that I have here. We have the father's genotype as big C, little, uh, big C, big, big D, little E. Right, because you know that genes occur in pairs, and I said haplotype is one inheritable, as it is described, in here. the three genes are inherited together as a haplotype. And then we have the little c, little d, little e, forming the genotype of the father, and the other side shows the genotype of the mother. 
from this, the, because, the, like I said earlier, the presence of big G antigen denotes whether the person is either positive or negative. So from what we have on the body, phenotype of the father, the father is actually average positive. Why the mother? Because of absence of big D. The mother is there, average, eh? negative. And then look at that, the offspring. When you cross it out in the Mendelian eh, fashion, you have the four offspring down there. And what we have there, we have two average positive individuals and two average negative eh, individuals as per phenotypes. Why the genotype uh, uh, as indicated on the board there? Okay. Average genotype, as shown on the slide, the shorthand and then the frequency. You just go through it. Okay. Now, clinical importance of average antibodies. Clinical importance of average antibodies. Just one of the basic differences between ABO and RH system is that the RH antibodies are not natural occurring antibodies. They are immune antibodies. So they are produced, you know, due to antigenic stimulation. What it means that before they can be produced, there must be something more stimulated. There must be an introduction of RH antigens into a system where it is, you know, absent before it will trigger the production of the antibody. Why the ABO antibodies are natural occurring? Now, in RH incompatibility, there must be first exposure because the, the person that is RH negative does not have the antigen and he does not have the antibody. So for him to make the antibody, there's, the antigen must be introduced. So that's what, what, that's what we mean by first exposure. The first exposure can be either through blood transfusion, giving incompatible blood, or pregnancy, where a woman who is negative is carrying a baby that is positive. During birth or through what we call fetal maternal hemorrhage, the baby's red cells can uh, enter the mother's circulation and then sensitize the mother to produce this antibody. So for average incompatibility, what we call first exposure, then we have the primary response. This primary response is the production of the antibody. And then there is the immunological memory. And the antibodies once produced go into memory. And a second exposure, a second exposure that might be immediate and severe response. That is severe advice uh, reaction that can be fatal or harmful to the patient involved. Now, one of the clinical importance of this RH antibody is that they are implicated in transfusion reaction. Transfusion reaction. And remember what we said earlier that they can cause hemolytic transfusion reaction, but it's most, most, mostly extravascular uh, uh, um, reaction. And they cannot, uh, they cannot activate a uh, complement. And the reaction can be immediate or delayed. It can be immediate or delayed. Because if somebody has been exposed to the antigen before and an antibody was produced and the person re encountered the same antigen again, there might be immediate adverse reaction. So you can have delayed slash severe transfusion reaction. Then another clinical importance of this RH antibody is they are highly implicated in what we call hemolytic disease of the newborn and fetus. Hemolytic disease of the fetus and the newborn. And anti-D causes the most severe form of hemolytic disease of the newborn. Anti-D causes the most severe form of hemolytic disease of the newborn. But because presently, because of advent of um, anti-D immunoglobulin in the prophylaxis, anti-D immunoglobulin prophylaxis, this, you know, the incidence have surely come down a bit, but it's still there in some part of the world. Other average allo antibodies that are capable of causing severe hemolytic disease of the newborn include anti-C. 
the anti D and anti little C can actually cause severe hemolytic disease of the newborn. Anti D and anti little C can cause severe hemolytic disease of the newborn. Why others can cause moderate or mild hemolytic disease of the newborn? We also have anti G is also associated with hemolytic disease of the fetus and the newborn, but it can cause it can only cause milder form of hemolytic disease of the newborn. If a pregnant lady has anti G and not anti D, she will still require anti D prophylaxis. She will still require anti D prophylaxis. But if the antibody is actually anti D plus anti C, and that is I'm talking about big C here, with or without anti G, she will not need anti G prophylaxis. But remember what I said: the severe form of hemolytic disease of the newborn is caused by anti D and anti little C, anti D and anti little C. Now, there's a question here that I want us to answer. Why is why is it that RH incompatibility is actually very dangerous compared to ABO incompatibility during pregnancy? Why is it that RH, RH incompatibility is more severe than ABO incompatibility during pregnancy? One of the reasons is that most antibodies in ABO blood group system are of IgM class, like we discussed earlier. The anti-A and anti-B antibodies are of IgM class. They do not, the IgM antibodies, they are cold antibodies and they do not cross the placenta. Why in RH blood group system, the RH antibodies are mostly IgG and they can cross placenta. Another reason is that remember that incompatibility is seen in average blood group system. The incompatibility is seen between average negative woman and her average positive uh, fetus. And this happens when average this this happens when an average negative woman marries an average positive man and now bears an average positive uh, fetus. Average negative woman marries a husband who is average positive, and the baby is she is carrying is average positive. And remember, for hemolytic disease of the newborn, for a child to have hemolytic disease of the newborn, it starts from the second pregnancy, not the first pregnancy. Because remember, there must be first exposure. So if a child is if a woman has not been sensitized either through abortion or D and C. Uh, procedure before marriage. If a woman has not been sensitized during all this process, because a woman can also be sensitized during process of D and C or abortion and all the all that. But if that did not happen and the woman marries during her first pregnancy, and the woman is negative and married an average positive man, if the first baby is average positive. That what we call fetal fetal maternal hemorrhage, where a little of baby's blood can leak into the mother circulation. This can actually sensitize sensitize the woman during the first pregnancy, and when this is done, the first baby is usually not affected. But if the woman takes in the second time, and the baby the woman is carrying now is also positive, RHD positive, that is when this antibody that had been previously produced during the first pregnancy cannot cross the placenta and harm and attack the baby's red blood cells, destroying the baby's red, red blood cells, causing anemia, severe hemolytic anemia for the baby in the womb. The baby can be born at stillborn or at still birth or can be born uh, with severe jaundice or we call hemolytic disease of the newborn. The reaction of average negative uh, woman against her average positive offspring becomes progressively more severe with each subsequent uh, pregnancy. That is, if there is no intervention. 
if there is no intervention, if, if the concentration of antibody that is produced keeps them rising. But these days, because of uh, because of um, RHD prophylaxis, antenatal serology, you know, helps to know the women that are negative. And once from 28 days, 28 weeks of gestation, they are, they start their RHD prophylaxis, you know, uh, till from there till when they put to bed. Within 24 hours, uh, within 72 hours of bed, they are also giving RHD immunoglobulin prophylaxis. And it, what this does is that it mops up the, the baby's breast cell that, has, that, can, uh, that entered into the mother's circulation. It mops it up and prevents these breast cells from sensitizing the mother to produce the antigen. Another thing I want to mention here is that for women who are RHD negative, but they are blood group O in terms of ABO blood group. If they are carrying, if they are carrying RH positive child that are either A, B, or AB, this woman is actually resistant to sensitization by the RHD antigen. This is because a woman who is uh, who is O ABO O blood group and is also RH negative. That is O RH negative woman. In her uh, plasma, that woman has anti A and anti B. So if there is a leakage of baby cells into her system, there is a tendency that this anti A and the anti B can destroy these cells because the cells are A cells, B and B cells. And it can prevent these cells from sensitizing the mother to produce the anti, anti D. And this phenomenon has led to an effect, effective preventive measures to avoid RH sensitization in these uh, women. But even at that, shortly after its birth, of an RH positive baby, the mother is given an injection of anti RH antibodies or ROGA, as the case may be. These passively acquired antibodies destroy any fetal cells that got into her circulation before they can elicit any active immune response in her. Therefore, it is encouraged that pregnant women should no joke with their antenna so that they can be monitored and the anti D prophylaxis start at the appropriate time to prevent uh, sensitization. Because most times, once a woman is sensitized to produce all these antibodies, it becomes difficult to manage. Thank you very much. We will welcome feedback questions and comments. Thank you.